All right. So um, to talk about inflation, I first want to come back to the cosmic microwave background. So as we just saw, the CMB, this, of course, was the, the earliest signal that's sent to us from the universe. So there, there's, you know, the radiation is older than that, but this is the earliest back in time that we can actually see that radiation because only when it is um, cool enough for atoms to form um, can photons freely stream away and uh, come make their way toward us here in the future. So during this process of recombination, atoms form, photons decouple, and that's the release of the cosmic microwave background. So in the CMB, what we notice is that there are these small temperature fluctuations, right? These little blue um, cool spots and red hot spots. And there are kind of different length scales, right? It seems like there's some areas where there are sort of larger spots but then there's all this kind of very fine detail within the CMB. And that fine detail is related to the structure of galaxies along filaments and the voids, right? Um, but these fluctuations are really small. Um, so the average temperature of the CMB is remarkably uniform across most of the sky. And it's weird that it's this uniform because if we look at two different opposite points in the sky, right, from our perspective here on Earth, if we look in two opposite directions, we wouldn't really expect them to look the exact same temperature. They're not connected in any way now. And so we wouldn't expect them to be um, in thermal equilibrium. So if you think about like, if I have a, um, I don't know, let's say I'm cooking pasta on the stovetop, right, and I'm boiling water. Well, I do expect that most of the pot of water will eventually reach the same temperature because it's in a small area. And so any of the heating that I do basically makes its way throughout the entire pot. But if I go to say a, I don't know, like a mountain lake in Oregon that has a hot spring on the bank, maybe you found one of these before, you expect it to be warm right where the hot spring is, but you don't expect it to be that same temperature clear on the other side of the lake. Right? They're not close enough for them to come into thermal equilibrium for the temperatures to equilibrate. So there's no reason to expect that totally different parts of the sky would have the same temperature, but they do. So this is what we call the horizon problem. And I guess it's just called horizon because on different ends of, ends of our horizon, we see that the CMB has the same temperature. It makes sense that any you know, local region within that point would have the same temperature. So parts within point A and parts within point B could have the same temperature, you know, internally, but they shouldn't be the same on opposite parts of the sky. So if those points were once in thermal contact, then this problem would be solved. So were they once in thermal contact? The second problem that we have is called the flatness problem. So again, looking at the CMB, um, we notice that the spot sizes uh, that we measure, those, those pertain to the density of our universe. And when we measure the spot sizes, we find that the universe has a critical density, meaning that space is flat. So the geometry of our space time is flat. And um, this is only a problem because there's no real reason to expect this. The universe could have any density. It doesn't have to have a critical density. So why does it have a critical density? So in order to explain these two problems, we want to come up with some theory um, that could kind of solve these problems. Why are they problems? Because we don't know why they are the way they are. And cosmologists want to know the why, not just the, the facts. So in order to solve these problems, the inflation model was proposed. And basically what the inflation model says is that in a very small time, at the very beginning of the quark epoch, the universe undergoes a period of rapid expansion. So it expands by a factor of 10 to the 50th over a time scale that took less than 10 to the minus 10 seconds. So this is much less than the blink of an eye. The universe has uh, inflated from a, a tiny little, you know, 10 to the minus 50 meter object up here to a 10 to the 10 meter radius object. So we've, we've you know, added a lot of space in a very, very, very short amount of time. So that's why it's called inflation. And how does this solve the two problems? 
Well, the idea is that before inflation, if your universe is only 10 to the minus 26 meters across, then every single part of it is within thermal contact. So they were at the same temperature. And so right at that moment of inflation, everything is essentially in thermal contact, can be the same temperature. Inflation extremely you know, blows up the universe in a very short amount of time. So after inflation, points on the opposite side of the sky are still the same temperature because they were just you know, 10 to the minus 10 seconds ago, neighbors. So that's how we solve the horizon problem. The flatness problem is a little bit harder to think about. And honestly, I'm no expert on the geometry of space-time. So you'll, I'll have to take the textbook interpretation as canon here, I guess. The idea is that if you, if you start with a 10 to the minus 26 radius object, and then it expands to a 10 to the plus 10, um, then the curvature that you could possibly measure on such an object is negligible. You'll never notice any curvature, even if it exists. So even if the geometry of space isn't flat, we would never be able to meaningfully measure that on any time or any length scale that we have access to. So the analogy is that if at the beginning of inflation, your ant is sitting on a curved balloon, well, at the end of inflation, the universe is so much bigger that the curvature cannot be seen. So that's how inflation solves the flatness problem. So, I mean, these problems are really important to solve because they are kind of puzzles um, that are a consequence of our Big Bang Theory. And if inflation didn't happen, then those puzzles have to be solved some other way. <laughs>